Welcome to this special edition of European Railway, the video magazine for the continental enthusiast. Zweisimmen forms a junction with the BLS operated line from Spiez and the narrow gauge Montreux Oberland Bernois, or MOB for short, which runs through the famous resort of Gestad as well as up the branch to Lenk. The BLS operate a mixture of locomotive hauled formations as well as electric multiple units such as this. This is a service of Spiez seen arriving at Erlenbach about halfway down the branch. The line is currently a favourite with enthusiasts, keen to ride behind one of the few remaining BLS Class A E404 electrics. This is number 257, bringing up the rear of this train at Weissenbach. The AE44s are scheduled for withdrawal at the end of September this year, after more than 60 years in service. This is number 258. On the outskirts of Zweisimmen, BLS Class 565 EMU No. 730 arrives with the local stopping train from Spiritz. <laughs> 
This is the view overlooking the town along the Simmon Valley towards Lenk. The town's small airstrip can be seen in the distance as this two-car type BDE44 unit heads south towards its first stop at the village of Blankenburg. Unit number 5004 sets off at a pace while working the 1248 to Lenk. Zweisimmen is seen in the background and received its name as the result of the two rivers named Simmen which flow through it. This is Blankenburg station on the line to Lenk. In the background is the other MOB route to Gestadt and then onwards eventually to Montreux. One of the railway's GE44 locomotives climbs up the hill with the 1250 Golden Pass panoramic service to Montreux on 30th of April 2004. The train passes a GDE44 locomotive dating from 1983 on the 1105 service from Montreux. The line to Lenk has recently been threatened with closure, with all trains replaced by buses. Hopefully this course of action will not be allowed to succeed. Four of these BDE units were introduced on this line in the mid-1970s. In 1974 it was announced that the line to Lenk was to be converted to standard gauge because of its very poor condition. A decision was delayed for several months until a serious derailment on 14th June 1975 forced the line to be closed altogether. The prolonged closure allowed a review of the original plans and a new decision to completely relay and upgrade the existing meter gauge line instead took place. 
Passenger services once again resumed on 27th September 1979. This is Weissemann Station, and the Panoramic Express from Montreux arrives hauled by an MOB GTE44 locomotive. The depot can be seen to the right of the train. This is BLS Electric Tractor number 42 during station shunting operations. Freight traffic is limited to standard gauge wagons being loaded and unloaded in the nearby yard. Less common are standard wagons working through to the narrow gauge system as seen here. This rake is about to be transferred onto special meter gauge transporter trucks for the trip down the branch to Lenk. One of the MOB lines of ABDE 88 units dating from 1968 departs with the southbound working for the Gestad line. These units are capable of hauling five passenger cars over the steepest parts of the route and often cover over 100,000 kilometres per year on such duties. Trains on the Gestad route can be seen climbing high over the town before turning west and on to Montreux. The 
stars of the line at the moment have to be the BLS AE44s. After all being withdrawn in 1996 and placed into reserve, the final four were reinstated in 1999 due to acute locomotive shortages. The stay of execution has now lasted over five years, but their end is now scheduled for September 2004, when newer RE44 are to take over their duties. Finally, on a glorious spring day, number 257 departs on the rear of the 1221 Golden Pass service to Interlaken. The line running along the Bielesee between Neuchâtel and Biel is one of the lesser known main lines in Switzerland. We take a look at activity during 2002 and 2004. The route is part of the Zurich and Basel to Lausanne and Geneva main line and sees a mixture of locomotives and multiple units working local and long distance passenger services. This is St Blaise station on the southern end of our featured area close to Lake Neuchâtel and SBB RE44 number 11255 pauses with the southbound local service. Freight services generally run hourly in each direction, with class AE66 usually providing the power. Tank trains such as this are common.
We move up to the Bélizé now and to the small town of Le Gertz, as Class AE66 number 11470 trundles north towards Beale on 30th April 2004. Overlooking the town and BLS liveried 465017 also heads north light engine. The best time to photograph this line is in the afternoon and early evening. Apart from this short stretch, most of the line is in fact double track. Class 460s are also to be found on some of the intercity workings as seen here with 460014 providing the power. There are usually three passenger services each way every hour. There are some spectacular views across the lake from the vineyards which overlook the line. This is the scene at Tam. This lake is a popular sailing centre with numerous yachts berthed at the many small harbours and jetties. The lake also provides a living for the local fishermen. Finally, a BLS Class 465 electric heads this southbound oil train through Tam. The line is reasonably busy and the lake forms a superb background for the railway observer and photographer alike and is well worth a visit.
The BLS over the Lochberg Mountains is probably one of the most popular main lines in the country. We take a look at passenger and freight train activity at Kandergrund before some late night action at Goppenstein. We begin here at the now closed station at Kandergrund as a pair of BLS RE44s number 184 and 174 head this southbound mixed freight for Italy. The train is being banked by another RE44 number 183. The time is 3 minutes past 7 in the evening. On our Friday evening visit, freight trains were three an hour in each direction. This is 460 111 and 113. We now move to Goppenstein as one of the Kandersteg car shuttle trains emerges from the 14 km tunnel. There are some local services on this route, although they only serve the main stations. This is a class 565 electric unit in BLS's new house colours, seen heading for Spitz.
One of the consequences of the new BLS base tunnel currently being built is the requirement to move vast quantities of spoil by rail. BLS currently use a variety of locomotives, including this class AE88 double locomotive number 273, specifically kept in service just for this traffic. The car shuttle trains operate every half hour and provide a vital role in connecting the main road between Brigg and Spiertz. The Lochbrook Tunnel burrows under the 3,699 metre high Balmhorn Mountain, too high for a mountain road. The new class 485s allow BLS to operate into Germany and Italy. This pair are seen approaching from the south with an empty car train, a type of traffic that is fairly common on this line. The last rays of the evening sun shine on the very tops of the mountains as another car train from Kandersteg arrives just before 9pm. By this time the light was fading rapidly, as indeed was the temperature.
Finally, a pair of BLS 465s head north with a train of complete lorries. Their drivers accommodated in the first coach behind the locomotives. Andermatt is situated on the only east-west rail link in the southern half of the country, a one-metre gauge rack line linking Kur with Brieg and the famous resort town of Zermatt, which we will cover later on in this programme. The town lies at 4,667 feet above sea level, and on 29th April this year, when these scenes were taken, there was still a considerable amount of snow lying in the area. Here, an HE44 electric number 102 arrives with the Glacier Express from Kerr to Zermatt. Former Brig Visp Zermatt Barn locomotive number no. 5 is seen rear touching the restaurant car onto the back of the train. The line's new operators, Matterhorn Gotthard Barn, have taken over the running of the system from the former Furger Oberalp Barn and the Brig Visp Zermatt Barn. Some, but not all, of the locomotives are now appearing in the new company's red livery. Andermatt is also the junction of the branch line from Goshenen. Here, a DEH44 locomotive dating from 1979 arrives on the rear of a terminating service. The locomotive still carries the old FO branding. After leaving Andermatt, the Glacier Express heads west and begins the gentle 102 metre climb up to the Furka Tunnel at Realp. The train is seen here in the Furka Royce Valley. Here at Rayalp, the eastern end of the Furka Tunnel is seen as a car shuttle train from Oberwald arrives behind another XFO locomotive, number 82. The main road over the Furka Pass, which rises to 7,910 feet, is only open during the summer months, hence the need for car carrying shuttle trains such as this. Indeed, before the tunnel opened in 1982, the rail line over the pass was also only open during the summer period, usually late May until early November.
To the east of Andermatt, there are some stunning views overlooking the town. Here, number 92 uses the rack as it descends down the steep mountainside. This view was taken from the main road over the Oberalp Pass, which was still closed higher up due to snow. Looking down on Andermatt station, we see the 1630 departures for Decentis on the left and Goshenen on the right. The Decentis bound train is seen a few minutes later as it climbs high above the town. The 1530 series from Brieg arrives behind DEH44 locomotive number 92. This is the stop from a Goshen and terminating service. The coaches are all in the process of being shunted into the carriage sidings adjacent to the station platforms. The 1730 to Goshenen departs behind number 92.
The station is generally at its busiest from 20 past until 22 the hour, as trains arrive and depart from all directions. Finally, another superb view from above the town as a train arrives from Goshenen. Note the livery variations from the old Furka Oberalp to the new Matterhorn Gotthardbahn, as seen on the second vehicle. This line operates through some of the most stunning scenery in Switzerland, and a journey along it can be absolutely breathtaking, whatever the time of year. Another hugely popular rail system is the meter gauge Reitischerbahn in the southeast of the country. We begin our short interlude at Zernetz as a service from School Tarasp is seen heading for Pontresina, close to the popular ski resort of San Moritz. This is Guarda Station, as a service from School to Rasp, powered by GE44 number 613, stops for custom on Sunday 12th May 2001. In the opposite direction, locomotive number 632 arrives with the 1500 departure for school to Rasp. The Reitischerbahn, in terms of route mileage, is the largest of the Swiss private railways with a system of around 375 kilometres, and this branch is just a very small part of that system. Finally, number 612 gets the 1458 departure for Pontresina underway. Following on from our look at the matterhorn Gotthardbahn around Andermatt, we now turn to the same railway, but this time operating to the tourist resort of Zermatt, which lies at the base of the famous Matterhorn mountain. Our first sequence is filmed early in the morning, as former Brieg-Visp Zermattbahn locomotive number 1, 
hauls the 0610 service from Brig to Zermatt up the steep incline near to the village of Randa on 1st May 2004. In the opposite direction, sister locomotive number 3 powers the 0710 series from Zermatt. We are now just north of Tej, the limit of all road traffic, as one of the half hourly shuttles to and from Tej descends down the steep valley and releases from the section of rack about 600 metres north of the town. There is a very interesting train along the line which departs Teish at around 8.30 each morning and that is a freight from Brieg to Zermatt. This is the approach to Zermatt station, with superb mountains towering high above. 
The station is a modern design, built underneath an uninspiring concrete roof, designed more to keep the heavy snow off the trains. Already the local diesel shunter, number 72, is away with the task of repositioning the freight wagons. There is really one reason to visit Zermatt, and this is it, the 14,553-foot Matterhorn, seen here in exceptional weather conditions. The Gornagrat barn runs up to three services every hour up to the Gornagrat mountain using electric multiple units running on meter gauge track, again with rack assistance. This Type B HE48 unit dates from 1994 and has seating for 124. <laughs> and what a view anyone travelling up the mountain was going to get on this particular day. Other units working on the line include this type BDE24 single rail car dating from 1961. The unit is just a few hundred yards from the terminus station. Meanwhile, diesel shunter number 72 has just crossed the street and is on to the Gornagrat barn to deposit one of the wagons from the morning's freight. 
Here it is seen retracing its steps. Of interest is that almost all road-borne traffic is in the form of electric vehicles, even in the case of the bus that follows the locomotive across the street. This is the Breithorn mountain which forms the border with Italy. Note the ski slopes and the line of chairlifts. In superb lighting, another shuttle train from Zermatt approaches its destination. Most of these trains are powered by ABDEH 66 or 68 units dating from the early 1960s. This is number 2031, pushing a non-powered driving car and trailer.
now move to Brieg and to the terminus for all Matterhorn Gotthard Bahn services. The 1110 from Zermatt arrives at the low level platforms which are adjacent to the standard gauge BLS and SBB station. On the standard gauge lines, 460058 arrives with an intercity express off the Geneva line, which follows the Rhone Valley up from Lake Geneva. Looking down onto the low-level tracks, locomotive number four is seen hauling empty carriages out to the depot for servicing. Trains on the Rhone Valley route operate every 30 minutes. This is 460067. An interesting formation here sees BLS 465010 sandwiched in the centre of this train from Basel. An unusual view of this ex-Fürger Oberalp Barn electric tractor number 4926. 
This 1946 built locomotive is seen shunting at the southern end of Brieg Station just before 2 pm on 1st May 2004. To the south of Brieg Station is the entrance to the 19.8 km Sanfon Tunnels. Here, 182 and 163 head south with a freight for Domodossola in Italy. Finally, we would like to leave you with no less than four Class 460 electrics hauling this southbound freight, giving the driver over 32,000 horsepower to play with. We hope that you have enjoyed this special edition of European Railway.